Go in and out, in and out, in and out. Welcome everybody. I'm Tom Matuska here for the Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company. Thursday afternoon live. Um, just a short week before Christmas, less than a week before Christmas. I'm here with Brett Wingfield, um, and we are festively attired in our in our very attractive, ugly holiday sweaters. holiday sweaters. Um, and uh, last week, I think we were anticipating the catalog mailing, and um, many of you are calling in. We're getting calls um, every day about the new catalog. Yeah. And we talked last week about uh, all the new products. Um, it's been kind of fun to hear from people saying, oh man, I'm so excited. And people are sending photos. Um, don't forget there's a contest going on and they'll discuss more of that later. I think Mandy will be here. Um, there's new things like, uh, like Mandy said, over 480 new products. I know she's trying to get 500 and uh, very soon she's going to be doing that. There's a new Sagebrush Series Mule Deer with replacement noses. It takes the work out of it. It's inexpensive. I think you mentioned to the people last week that they can get the best mule deer form on the market. Yes. A recreation nose that's, I'll say competition quality. Uh, people are a little careful to use that term, but they really are competition quality, modeled by um, Brian Wilson. Yeah. Um, the nose and the form together as a unit, less than you can buy a good mule deer form for most companies. Um, so the price is right. New uh, reference photos. Um, we've got new pair eyes. The XP Whitetail series are flying off the market, off the shelves. I looked at the shelves tonight and I said, what are you guys doing? Are you making any or what? And we've got um, three people doing nothing but making these new mannequins and they're extremely popular. Um, new sizes, we'll have new sizes to come. Um, what else we got? We got uh, Createx paint. It's a new acrylic paint, new, new to us. Createx has been around for a long time. Um, we've been using it a lot in the shop here and it's turning into our, our go-to painting medium. Um, all kinds of new tools. Mandy um, likes tools and gadgets yeah. and uh, she comes up with some pretty, yes. pretty yes. fun things. So we've got um, new tools. Uh, new bear heads by Cindy Christman, um, half life size bear. Um, geez, we've just got new chemicals, um, new rub shells, new grizzly change out heads. Um, kits, you can get kits. There she is. You guys look good. Um, I'm going through the catalog, hitting on some of the high points. Um, tell me if there's anything. Glad your cover's attached. <laughs> a lot of art. <laughs> well, I think our catalog's a little big for the, all the hot mailings this year. Um, we had somebody say that it looked like it went through a machine and it cut off the top of the catalog. We've got a couple people. If you get a catalog um, and it's kind of destroyed, we'll make sure you get a good, perfect one. Let's know. But for those of you that don't want to miss out on the selfies, just open to your favorite page and take a picture. Was it Laura Gregor that said that? Yes. So yes. Laura, I know you said that, but you also, I don't know if you know, but you're in there. So find yourself in there and take a selfie of that page. But we will definitely, on your next order, give us a call, we'll throw one in. We have them on hand, but make sure you're getting them first because they're just getting delivered now. And Corey Carruthers, um, Corey Carruthers went crazy um, with more bird heads. We have a lot of new bird heads by Corey. And um, those are available. Um, just, it's jam packed with really, really, really good stuff. So don't forget, and and we'll vote on there. How does their, uh, how does the contest go? We vote on how many for the selfies. Okay, this is fun. But the selfies, it's everybody. The first four are getting a twenty-five dollar gift card. So the first four to do it are getting a $25 gift card, and we have three so far. And I'll show you those three. But People get really creative. They're, they're extremely, uh, uh, extremely Here's the fun. first Let one. Let me see that one. That is David Sunker. Sunken. Sunken. Dave Sunken. And then Dave was the first. Second one is Justin Bach. And I believe... Which form is that? 
That's our XB, right? Yeah, I think that's one of the XBs, yeah. So nice looking mount there, Justin. And this, <laughs> this one's pretty, pretty creative. Um, I don't like even, <laughs> I'm gonna murder your name, but Trumpas Sisson. But let me tell you, if you can see that there, at first I thought it was our catalog, how it came through the mail, because that's, yeah, that's what some what, of them are looking like. On that but, dog uh, knows quality, that's all I can tell you. The dog got a hold of a competitive, competitors catalog and pretty and we won't crafty. See that in anybody's so basically these three already have $25 gift certificates. But we go <laughs> yeah, <laughs> gift certificates coming. We have one more spot open for that. On top of we'll put all of them to a vote for our customer for one customer and our cus our employees will get to pick a winner, a top winner. So we had our employees had a lot of fun with and that. And that's always fun. Yeah. We have those in the break room and everybody comes through and votes. It's real fun. So, okay, yeah. and last week we went through some of the new products. We kind of did a, a show and tell, and um, it, it must have piqued a lot of people's interest because some of those things uh, flew we off the shelf also. Away. Calls right away. And uh, so um, this week we we are going to um, show you coloration of um, artificial parts. Yeah. Yep. And it doesn't just apply to artificial parts, but it applies to, um, you can use it on your, you know, real bird bills, your artificial bird bills. Yep. But we do end up painting a lot of artificial parts. And when you start out, can I borrow your bottom jaw there? Yeah. Um, when you start out with something like this, a lot of times it's um, mind boggling to a taxidermist get something like this in the mail and they go, oh my gosh, where do I start? And um, it's it's much easier than you think, but we do it so often that we kind of come up with a little system on how to do these things. Um, and we have lots of different lots of different mediums we'll call them to to color with. We have um, lacquer paints, we have water paints, we have pan pastels, we have um, Prolex powders, we have. Um, all kinds of different things, oil stains. We you know, nothing's out of bounds when it comes to um, coloring your artificial parts to try to create some kind of realism. And um, we want to make depth too. And you're probably the deepest person I know when it comes to <laughs> <laughs> lots of stuff, but especially uh, especially putting color on things. Um, and the airbrush. We use airbrushes. We use um, paint brushes, we use Q-tips, we use micro applicators, um, little, with Pan Pastel comes with all those other yeah. sponge applicators, and those are all um, fair game when it comes to coloration. If it works, do it. If it doesn't work, go on to something else. Um, most of, anytime you're working with a plastic part or artificial part, whether you cast it yourself or bought it, um, a lot of times your first attempt just doesn't look so good. Um, if we're using lacquer paints, we lacquer them off. If we're using water paints, we'll wash them off. Uh, pan pastels will come off. And until they're sealed and really affixed, um, you can usually get them off and start again. So, with that in mind. So, we have a couple of questions. One, somebody would like to know what are you guys wearing? <laughs> what are we wearing? Oh my gosh. Fancy. Uh, this is. A Yuletide dinosaur. And a Brett, what does yours say? Why? Why is the it's carpet, the carpet all wet, all wet, Todd? <laughs> I can't tell you. And then so we had somebody say, Derek Wink, he says he loves a new deer form. Um, Mark, um, hi, Darren. Mark Crook would like to know if we have the Whitetail um, DVD from Taxidermy University. We, oh, we do. We do. That's probably the the hottest DVD going, and it's, it's excellent. It is crammed packed with knowledge. How long is it? Eight hours, and I just watched it a couple weeks ago. It's it's good stuff. Yeah. It's really, really good it's stuff. very good. By um, Clint Ricky. Yep. And Cole and the team put that together, and it's it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, John Pesla says, Merry Christmas to all in the industry, and thank you for these videos. And Merry Christmas to all you guys, and thanks for watching us. Um, and I see a lot of people are saying that they receive their catalog. So if you're just tuning in, make sure to submit your selfie. Take a selfie. Mm -hmm. Last year we had people taking 
pictures of their catalog from tree stands yeah. in the bathroom. Yeah, we had <laughs> we had one of those. A lot of creative people. So don't forget our contest. Get it in quick. We still have room. Um, lots of fun. Have fun with it. Uh, so we're going to be using an airbrush, I think, today. And nothing is more frustrating than an airbrush. Parentheses, it doesn't work. And usually that's a dirty airbrush. Um, I am a bad person for taking care of my airbrush. I get so excited with the finished project that I go home all chest puffed out and I'm so proud of myself, only to come in the next day and my airbrush is gummed up and doesn't work. So taking care of your airbrush, um, a lot of people say, I can't get this to spray through my airbrush, I can't get that to spray through my airbrush. I clean a lot of airbrushes, I repair a lot of airbrushes, and I would say 85% of it is operator neglect, not necessarily yeah. air, but yeah. neglect. Yeah. Um, so uh, we're getting some good messages, I think, because I see uh, facial expressions from <laughs> right girls here. Uh, so the first thing, before you get in... They're commenting on Brett's shirt. Why is the carpet all wet, Tom? Uh, I don't know, Margo. It's like one of the best Christmas movies out there. Oh, really? It's one of Brent's favorites. Oh. Why? Well, I think you better spin that old camera around. Hold on. Ty. Pull it down? I didn't want to pull it down. <laughs> Go show off your hat. No. Yes, what are you doing? You didn't know I would realize. Vicki, come, come on over and show us your hat. Show everybody. <laughs> show everybody. We got all our new hats in. I didn't know we They're were taping. Yes. Hello, how do I look? A little closer. Yeah, in the, in the screen. I'm not in Hello, Merry say. Christmas. Down a little lower. Merry Christmas. Yeah. This uh -huh, is why nice. you don't do it every week. Do I look good? Oh my gosh. Yes. I didn't know we were taping. I'm so embarrassed by <laughs> Okay. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Your airbrush isn't working. Or even if, if uh, it's working, we're going to make it work better. Um, things happen with these things. The first thing uh, I like to do is see how it sprays. If it's spraying, if it's not broken, don't fix it. But uh, usually what we'll do is we will take off the first tip. This is Niwata, and most of the airbrushes are very similar. Their configuration may be a little bit different. Um, we take off that little nozzle. Behind that is another one. And I take that off. And then what I like to do is I like to look at that needle and look at it with your naked eye. But if you want to um, really know how your parts work, uh, use a magnifying visor like this. Ooh, that's a big camera. And magnifying visor like this, and you can see your needle. You can see the, you know, whether it dog legs one way or the other, or if it's bent. Um, then, can we show them against the white paper? Maybe they can see it. Can you get, I don't know if you can see that close with this. But... Is it good? Mm -hmm. And this needle seems, even with the magnifying visor, seems to be pretty good. Um, I take off the back of the barrel. Now some of them, we talk to people all the time at shows that have never never taken their airbrush apart afraid because they're afraid to. Now, once I pull this needle out, there's nothing holding that trigger in. So unless I want to take it all apart, I'd be careful. Um, I pull the needle out. Sometimes you'll feel a bent needle. It'll drag on everything coming out of the, the shoe. Okay, then you'll be able to feel a bent needle better than you can see one. And if you have any kind of snag on your skin, you'll feel it. Drag it on your pants. If it snags any material, it's bent. If it's bent, when air comes through there and paint goes through there, it's going to clog, it's going to divert your flow of, of air, and it's not going to work. Now, we have a thing that we can't live without, and this is a sharpen air airbrush needle sharpening system um, by Chad Elliott. And these things are a lifesaver. Uh, Mandy can probably tell you how much an airbrush needle costs, but um, on the less expensive airbrushes, they're at least 10 12 bucks. And on the expensive airbrushes, you might be up to 50 bucks for a good needle. How much? 50. 60? For that micron? Yeah, is that what it is? Uh, so if it's bent, don't throw it away. Don't discard it. 16 Good, 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 good. Uh, in the sharpened air, you have four 
supports. The first one is going to straighten my needle. The second one is going to polish my needle. The third one is going to reshape my shoulder. And the fourth one is going to polish that. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to stick that in there. And all you need to do is hold it and twist it. I pull it in and out. And if it's bent, if it's bent, you'll feel it catch all the time. And when it ceases to catch as you're pulling it out, Chad Elliott would probably murder me for explaining his system like this, but, but we use it quite a bit and it's easy to, to use. He's got a great, if you want to see how it works. He's going to come visit sometime. Um, look up his YouTube video on the Sharpen Air. It's very impressive. Okay, I pull it out. It's, it's going in and out very nicely, turning smooth. I'm going to put it in the polish port, twist it, which should be polishing. I never worry about my shoulders. I usually skip it after those two because I can't get it at home. Uh, I do it in the shoulder or I'm going to go to the next one. That's how easy it is. It doesn't take, it doesn't take a long time. If you guys sometimes have trouble um, polishing your knives or sharpening your knives, um, this is nothing like that. Okay, now that needle should be straight. It should be polished. There's one more thing uh, to pay attention to, and that is called the fluid nozzle. And that's this little piece right here at the end. That can give you that, and that needle tip can give you all the trouble in the world. The fluid nozzle is this big. And if you drop it on the floor or if you sneeze, it's a gun. Uh, be careful with it. Now, you take your visor, your mic, uh, magnifying visor and you can pick up that little guy you can look at the end and a lot of times those are fragile and a lot of times that fluid nozzle gets flowered out um, kind of like a bugle gets kind of bulged out both of us, I think, are guilty of painting a lot with the back, without the back of our airbrush on because we're taking our needle out, we're doing adjusting things. And just the other day, I dropped my needle, or dropped my airbrush, and I thought, oh no, I bet I bent the tip. I looked at the tip, the tip was perfect. I thought, yes, but what happened was it fell on the back of the needle, which pushed it through the nozzle, and I ruined my nozzle, so I needed a new nozzle. And a nozzle you can't repair, it's a, it's a, $30 item or more. Okay, this nozzle seems to be very good. I'm gonna replace the first and make sure you tighten this. A lot of times your airbrushes won't work as you're painting, you got bubbles coming out of the tip. This needs to be tight, just finger tight, needs to be tight. Um, otherwise you're gonna suck air into there and it will cause you painting difficulties. Check for paint buildup inside of this little cap. Now, that's something many people, and if you read the directions on the custom micron, it says that is what? What does it tell you? Um, that is just more for protection of the needle, and it's intended to be removed. So, you will see us sometimes painting, painting like this. Now, when you're painting like this, that needle's exposed, you drop it, it's going to bend, and you're going to be in for a 10 to a $60 needle, or sharpen air. And these are very inexpensive compared to the needles. How much are these? $40. $40, and you can save yourself in just a couple needle sharpenings. I don't even know, I have to look. $44.95. You're like a... Walking. I stared at this book for Legend a long time this fall. Okay, then put it back in. As far as the inside of the bowl, um, I use um, Q tips a lot, but be careful with Q tips because they're cotton, and cotton is very bad when it gets down in there. The little, little strands of cotton down there get all the way to the tip, and then you can't get them out. Yeah, imagine a cup, just a couple of them. In that little fluid nozzle, it doesn't take much to plug that up. That's so my favorite way of cleaning that bowl is uh, 
with maybe a filbert or a wider paintbrush like that. If I'm using lacquer paints, I dip it in lacquer thinner and I kind of scrub it down in there. If I'm using water paints, I'll use it, I'll dip it in the water thinner reducer and I'll scrub it out and then spray it out. Then um, when you're when you think you're good to go, spray a little thinner through it, make sure it's working. Um, it's not a bad idea to put a little oil on these threads, put a little oil on your needle. Um, I think we have uh, somewhere we had Iwata makes Iwata lube. It's a good product. Mixes with your paint. It's not something that's gonna you're not gonna spray and get fish eyes on your work. Unless they have fish eyes. But take care of your <laughs> take care of your uh, airbrushes and you will have a much more friendly painting experience. The whole painting experience is dependent on I think having fun. And if you're fighting an airbrush, there's nothing fun about that. So make sure before you get involved with anything, whether it's a, a fish or a deer mouth or a, a bird bill or even rocks and habitat, that your airbrush and all of your equipment is clean and taken care of. Okay, so should we show them something? This show them. We talked about artificial parts. It's yeah, paint something artificial and try to make it look like life. Um, well, we can paint something with an airbrush. Okay, do it on the airbrush. Um, on airbrushes. One of the artificial parts that we paint often here in the shop because we offer it in a painted, a detailed um, version is a deer jaw set. Um, and we offer a, a detailed coloration. This is a base. I just put this base color on not too very long ago um, just to give us something to start with today. But normally you would start with something just like that. Clean and white, and they're available unpainted, base, base color, painted, or, de that? or detailed. Yeah, so this would be just base if they wanted to order one with just a start. And that's and a job that from um, Brian Olson. Brian, Brian Olson, yeah. yeah. Brian Olson yeah. actually cast and cast that white tailed jaw and modeled it. Yeah, um, and so anytime we work with a plastic part like this or a bird bill or whatever it may be. Um, the idea is to make it look lifelike, and to make it look lifelike, we're going to want reference material. So get the best reference material you can find, um, get a, a good picture, and get as much detail out of that photo as you can. If, if it's from 10 feet away, it will provide a basic color, but if you're from 10 inches away, you're going to get a whole bunch more a, a, lot, a lot greater range of color, which seems to be what we find as we look through um, this, just, just happened to grab an iBook, but take this photo for instance, if you look at the coloration around an eye at a deer from 20 feet away, it's going to appear to be brown, pretty much one brown color around the perimeter of the eye, but if you look into some of these really close up detailed reference photos, you're going to see a wide gradation of color from um, a real base flesh, which is kind of what we've started up here, and it'll work its way out to some little bit more of a, a warmer, maybe a almost a red warm tone on the underside here. You'll get into some purples and grays underneath, and then your brown on top. And then so the, the green from the window and the door. Thing. Don't forget, and there's probably a picture of Tom somewhere in there <laughs> too that he's standing on. Anyway, um, so you've really got a lot of of opportunity, especially with the digital with digital photography today, to expand your photos, to look at them, to blow them up, and um, really look for some depth. So. Um, with the base here, we're just gonna warm it up. And if I look at this, I see some kind of lighter flesh, I, but I also see some warm, some warm red. And if you think of it, you look at your own skin tones, um, I see the flesh tone, but I also see a light color. I see some little bit of pink as you get outside, things get a little um, cold, skin tones change. So I'm gonna go with some kind of hot colors to start and I think I think everybody's watched us do this with fish, bottom jaws of fish for a long time. So we kind of took this, this um, deer jaw set, 
And we're going to use that as a little more of an example today, but it's the same premise. We're just going to try and build some depth in this. And um, I painted this about 10 minutes ago with, with uh, my flesh color. And I want to get to a little bit more pink. I've added, I've added this pink right on top. Um, my hair. My hair is <laughs> uh oh, no problem. I'm in trouble. Um, I'm going to spray this out just a little bit. Make sure everything's spraying really well. Lightly dust over what I have. And now you can see this goes on a little bit lighter. And I'm going to use angles, and that's something that's really important and a, a very valuable tool to you, especially when you're working with something as contoured as this. We can protect the inside of these little, little rises in the palette um, by holding it on a steeper angle and spraying across them. So I'm just going to get a little bit of a light color going on top of it. Like no, this. no good. Yeah, yes, exactly. Um, and that's probably commonly referred to that as angle spray. So I'm just going to angle spray this to get a little bit of contrast. So. From one direction, I'm going to go a little bit here. Just to the eye. Okay. And again, using the angles, I'm going to protect one direction. And then I'm going to warm it up with some of the pink. I mean, more than the phone, more than the phone. Are you using the same color that was on at first? No, I was using a lighter blush color. So what colors um, are you using? So what colors am I using? Um, I'm in love with these. Did you mix? I yeah, oh, I mixed no. to get to where I am now. When are you gonna so, sell that color? When are we gonna You're sell this color? <laughs> Man, you're asking questions I can't answer right now. Um, this is uh, this started with a light um, light natural. I think it's one of the um, one of the lifeline colors um, from Createx. I added to that just a little bit of this infectious pink, and that's going to bring me to something a little more pink like this. And I'm going to put that color just down in the low spots. Now your eyes see more than some people's eyes. What about the people that that say, "Man, I." They don't, kind of like my wife says to me about music, I can't hear a beat, you know, and, 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 and it just boggles my mind. But what about the people that don't know where to start on something like this? What advice would you give them? I would say, that's a hard question. You should have told me you were going to ask me something hard. Um, I think starting out, we have, we have a lot of colors that are, built basically to replicate a flesh tone. And I would start, if you haven't done a whole bunch of airbrush painting, most people start light and build to a dark. I'm going to do a little bit of the opposite of that. I'm going to go with some bright colors and then tone down on top of it to add depth, um, depth and layers. But um, I think the safest way is to start light and build your color up. Do you cover the teeth with a protective covering to keep paint um, over spray off. That's a good question. And we do have um, two really cool little cheeks that we made here. Um, we have made so good. many of these yeah. shots we had to yes. come up with an easier way to the process. So, so um, uh, Tom mm -hmm. made those twenty years ago. Yeah, and that's this. It's still the same pair. They were just um, a simple little mask that we put on. Gets us a start. We still have to come in and we paint right around the very bases, but anytime we do broad sprays, um, we'll slide those on and they help. They help a lot. Research used to sell those for their job sets. Really? Mm -hmm. We should sell them for ours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, I've just got some um, pink reflections. I'm going to give you one more little shot of a um, of something red, purple, and. Uh, Keep going from there, but while I clean my airbrush, do you have something you want to show? Sure. 
Um, we do a lot of reproduction of fish, and uh, um, somewhere we've got some fish fins. And these are both pelvic fins. Of, I'm not going to be doing a pelvic fin, I'm going to do a pectoral, but uh, these are two different fish. Look at the two different versions of color. This fish, I think it's typical of a, I don't know, northern Minnesota fish tend to be a little darker and browner and have deeper golds. Um, our fish tend to be a little lighter here. Uh, same fin, two different versions. And what you're going to do is you're going to pick out, um, you might be able to see it from the fish when it came in. You might be able to see it after you thought it and, and, uh, and skinned it. Um, you'll have an idea of what you want to do, but something that we like to do, but for years we would paint a, paint a fin like this yellow, uh, paint the tip white, and we'd call it good. Um, over the last few years, we try to make things more realistic, and when looking at um, color, or at reference pictures, um, look at, now this is the blue sky behind, but this membrane is so thin that you can see the blue sky through that fin. This is nothing more than, I mean, a little bitty film. Now, if I painted that whole fin yellow, white tip, um, it would suffice for most customers, but you can paint in that transparency just by taking a little bit of a gray or a little bit of blue and putting it between your fin rays. So what I like to do first is I would paint my, my fin rays, the intensity of yellow that I want, like this one's really yellow, this one's much paler, and then I would come in and put my blue or my gray transparency between. And my last step would be I'd come in and put these little markings in the fin. Sometimes this fish has a lot. This fish does not have a lot. Um, now, the trick is how to do all this without spraying yellow and getting it all over your, your transparency or how to put the blue and gray in without getting it all over your yellow. And you can go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth and never um, get something unless you change your method a little bit. Another thing I want to point out is look at the flesh in these veins. Um, these are the fin rays. They've got blood in them. And that's what that flesh is coming through. So I like to put that in. Um, there's a really nice little um, purpley lavender up in here where, where the scales kind of quit. And uh, that's fun to put in. You can get some really realistic effects. So, somewhere here, I have a fan, and I played with this a little bit before live, and and I painted my my yellow first. And you can do that with an airbrush. For when you get your fins, a lot of companies come with real clear fins. Some people come with some come with white fins. And for years, we tried to make our fins as clear as we could, only to find out that it was easier if we gave them a soft, creamy coat first. So um, um, this fin, I actually came and I I put a in my airbrush a nice um, um, probably about this color, a little bit more eggshell, and I dusted it which took away the transparency. I can see nothing through here. Okay, now. What pressure are you guys using? Typically low or? Especially for detail like that, depending upon your application, we can go down to six, eight, 10 pounds of pressure um, if you're painting fine detail. Now, one way that I found is kind of helpful to do this is with the pan pastels. Now you can do the airbrush, turn your airbrush way down. You can, you can, you're not going to bother me, you can keep painting. Okay. Keep going. I'll just talk about it. They don't want to hear me. Um, <laughs> but uh, now you can take your, you can take your airbrush and you can try painting those rays and squiggle all over the place and have difficulty doing that. Um, but what if you took a little of a hand cast, you know, I just got a nice, Kind of a yellow here, and I'm just gonna run it down the ridge, down the thin ray. Now, all of a sudden, oh no, I got it where I didn't want it. Blow it, wipe it off, it's gone. You know, it's that easy. So, um, I'm probably 
Yeah, I, you can mess them up, but you can always, always start over real easy. Now, because those fin rays are raised, it's real easy to, um, I'm just hitting the high, high, high parts of them. And I won't do the whole thing, I'll just do the first part of it. You can see how easy it is for me to, I mean, you don't have to be an artist to do this, but you want everybody to think you are. See how I got those those rays, and you can intensify that all you want. You can get them hot yellow if you really want to. Um, do you find that sealing them helps? Sealing them does help, and we like to seal them. We got a few different sealers. Workable fix a tip. You've seen us use it before on Pan Pastel. Um, this is nothing more than makeup. I can wipe it off with my finger. Um, if I want it to stay where it's at, I'm going to hold it back and I'm just going to give it a dusting and that will set. Um, you're not going to wipe that off now without really stripping the fin. Okay, now let's go a little farther. We go. This is our turkey kit. Turkeys, that's walleye. It's a little walleye turkey. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put some of this flesh in here, and I'm going to start with flesh. I might go to a red, but I don't want to make them too red. And I'm going to just put a little flesh and create a little blood inside of those. Now, when you get a reproduction fish, some of your fins will be attached, but usually your paired fins aren't. So we'll, um, I actually like to paint them before, and you do too, I think, don't you? I do. And then get your fit real good. And some people, you're telling me the other day, actually um, put them on and break them off so they get a nicer seam. Yeah, yep, just a hairline crack. Um, you can do all your epoxy work so you don't have a big area to fix. You can do that ahead of time and then just pop them off. I put them on and break them off because I'm clumsy. <laughs> and now, we're going to do a little red. We have close here. And the nice thing about the pan pastel is it's not over spraying like you would would tend to with an airbrush. Oh, right there. Now look at you just put that on. You, you can't you can't do anything wrong because you can wipe it off. Now until you put the sealer on. Now it's locked on. Then let's take um, let's take some gray. And I'm going to hit just this webbing. And you can actually scrub it in there a little bit. Blow it, where you, blow it off where you don't want it. Now we can go over and over and over until you get the depth that you want. You can use an artist brush with the pan pastels, you can use the micro applicators, or you can use the large format applicators as well to, to apply any of these colors. Q-tip. Now I like this nice and smooth. So what I'm gonna do is take, I like a filbert brush. They're a little wider and a little stiffer. And I can kind of even out so it doesn't look quite so splotchy. And there is a little bit of a trick you want to, you don't want to make them look uh, striped. And you can make them look kind of striped if you're not careful. Now I'm going to take a little blue. Christmas music playing. Very cool. And then, now I, I get
get the feeling that my my uh, yellow isn't as I kind of wipe some of it off. So you can come back and you can hit your yellow again. Uh, something that I really found a benefit to the other day. Um, the tips of the walleye's fins that you want lighter color. I always say it's like when people are wondering what you know, what how much to get white. I always say it's it's kind of like they're swimming through the sand and it's dragging in the sand and they wore their color off. Um, but uh, those pantast cells are excellent for lightening the tips down here. And now you're putting a lot of color on with the pan pastel. Um, you can also, the, the pan pastels are compatible with about any other colors. If you wanted to paint part of this with an airbrush. Yeah, I can or, come in with an airbrush. Um, you can come in with a paintbrush. Um, Copic marker, we use a lot of Copic markers. Um, walleyes have, if you uh, look at this picture, see that little um, yellow right there? There's a little yellow spot there, a yellow spot there, and there, and there. Try to copy that. Copic marker is an excellent tool for that. It's a, it's a pan and you can put it um, only where you want it. Um, that's another. Nice There's so many there. colors of the Copic marker and variations of yellows and oranges. What would your top three go to be? My best ever for a walleye for, for, is a CY17. And all of a sudden, I saw a walleye that he did with a CY, is the bright, is the light yellow. I think it's an OA. And that was just that, after that, I switched immediately. They're just a tiny So little. you like the acid yellow, Brett, the OA, and yours is the golden yellow? Yeah, is golden yellow is pretty acid? intense. It, it is, but some of those northern, those darker fish, like that one that you've got the reference picture of, that bright yellow would be great, 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 great. But the older you get, too, um, if you notice, old Daxterms tend to color stuff up, and I think it's because they can't <laughs> see very good. Uh, we used to have a local taxidermist, and all his fish were about as neon, neon as you could get them. And that was before anybody had candy colors and all that stuff. And I thought, man, before I get like that, somebody stopped me because I think it's an eyesight. So you keep putting on bright, bright colors. Huh. Well, should we come back over here and do a little bit with this? Um, so, real quick, I did, this is just a crimson color, it's kind of a purple. I added some purple underneath, and again, I don't see any of that here. I apologize for not having a beer mouth reference picture in front of me, but um, I wanted to show you what was in the color cup, because that is a, uh, that's a little bit of a mixture. It came from uh, this deep green purple, and a little bit of the infectious pink, and a lot of times when I do a color like this, I don't really scrub the airbrush bowl. I let some of those colors um, bleed into each other from as they change. What are you dumping your paint into? Kitty litter. Use kitty litter? Um, Fresh kitty litter, Todd. Todd. <laughs> Todd. <laughs> Why is the carpet all wet, Todd? Because <laughs> uh, Brett used all the kitty litter in his paint. Kitty litter's yeah. gone. Um, no, that's a handy tip. We keep a um, we keep a tote with cat litter or floor dry available. Um, anytime you do a seminar, that's one of the problems you always have is how am I going to clean my airbrush? And started taking a little container with a little bit of cat litter and uh, soaks up all of your paint. And just makes it a lot easier. And we use the lacquers; it dries them up into like yeah. cat box. Yep. Yep. Multicolored cat box. <laughs> Multicolored cat box. <laughs> Um, I'm just going to run just a little bit of um, thinner through here as a cleaner um, in between colors. I wanna, I'm going to switch to a, a pretty light color now. So, um, and I'm going to go with this light natural. And, and all I'm trying to do here is I'm going to put a, a layer on top of this to basically set it back. Um, if, if I look at my skin tone, 
I see a lot of colors underneath versus on top, and um, that's just kind of the idea of you know, the church being there. I'm going to put some of this real light flesh in here, and I'm going to give it a really light dust, almost so light that if you, if you see it, it's almost too much. And you could be using any any series of colors you want to. You'll as you do this more, you'll develop your own favorites. But um, it's nice to have some of those that little bit of blotchiness underneath. Um, as we build depth and build color on top, it's just going to add. So that's just kind of one idea for building a little bit of depth and some flesh into, into some of your, your flesh tone applications, whether it's the bottom of the fish jar, or the front corner of the beer eye, or interior of the mouth. Um, just work with depth. Try to build some depth in between. We can spray clear glosses in between. That helps too. Um, but that works really good. Uh, another painting or coloration um, technique that works pretty good. Often we're using two-part epoxies and painting over a solid two-part epoxy sometimes is a challenge. Um, oftentimes these epoxies are gray or white depending upon your favorite epoxy. Um, one thing we found is it's kind of nice to color your epoxies. Um, so you have less paint um, required to to blend. I've got fix it sculpt here. You can use epoxy sculpt at any time, um, or the clay product. Uh, any of these two part mixtures um, to do some of like your fish fin blending. Um, so I'm going to mix up just a little bit of epoxy here. Oh, oh, there they are. are. Oh. Um, I've got uh, a couple here, and we've got a few different methods of. Of coloring epoxy, do you want to do? Sure, give you a pinch of that, or here you do that. Which, what flavor of color do you want? You want one of these or one of these? I'm gonna take the placking. Okay, give me the placking. The We've plaque. been selling a lot of that red placking for the pheasant and the just the regular. Now this can simulate blood vessels, really good in interior nostril work, nasal passages. Mm -hmm. Now what I'm doing is putting a little bit of flocking in there and kneading it in. And it actually gets kind of, it doesn't give you a real smooth color, which looks a little, a little more natural in some instances. Yeah, I think the best reference they can look at for flesh tones and skin tones is the back of their hand. Just look at the back of your hand and how many different colors are in the back of your hand. extremely dry. <laughs> That's eczema. <laughs> That's working with my hands too much. Those bag of hangers downstairs because we're out. Oh. Somebody have them on an order? Well, it will lock a little. Oh, hangers. Oh my gosh. Too many. You can just pick one and pick with it. Okay, now. Hand me the water. Okay. Add a little water. And this gives you a nice fleshy color, but it's because that's cotton flocking, it's um, it's not as smooth. It doesn't doesn't blend with the epoxy putty. It kind of just sticks in it. Yeah. And it actually gives you Maybe you can close tiny little speckles. And this isn't uh, referring to artificial parts, but uh, a lot of people use this on their pheasant models. You know, and oh, it, sure. it works yeah. pretty good. Put a put an adhesive on your on your pheasant waddle like Mod Podge, thin down Mod Podge, or um, maybe Elmer's glue and Put that in, press it into place, blow off the excess. Uh, some people get real, really nice results with that. Yeah. 
even color color your Mod Podge and use maybe a flat Mod Podge or sure. satin, don't use the glossy. Sure. Um, yeah. And you can put a little bit of um, um, water-based Cretex in it to color it so that if your flocking didn't cover everything, it would uh, still be the same color. Yeah. Um, another method to make a flesh-colored sculpting epoxy would just be to add oil paint. Just oil paint, Windsor Newton oil paint or any brand of oil paint right out of the tube. Um, we'll mix that oftentimes into an epoxy. And this is this works really well for blending your skin areas into your artificial parts and there's that little seam, a little whip line crack, if you've got just a little whip line transition. Um, sometimes you don't want to have to get in there with paint and um, you can mix up your pre-colored epoxy and if, you're, if you do a really good job of coloring your epoxy to match your surrounding area, um, you may not have to paint it at all, which is kind of nice. Um, so there's another colored epoxy. Of course, epoxy sculpts come in several different base colors for years, but you can always white, brown, black, black, black um, flesh. Um, there's a whole whole color palette yeah. down there. Yeah. Also. And so we started with the Fix It Sculpt. Um, the clay product also takes color very well. Um, it starts out a little. It starts out on the gray side, so it. it it's a little darker. Um, you're working against a little bit of a darker base, um, but it accepts color really, really well. Fix the sculpt's a little lighter, and the yep. epoxy sculpt white is pretty light. They take color really good. The natural epoxy sculpt and I think the clay are a little neutral color, I think yep. they call it. It's kind of a gray color, yep. and uh, the Just color doesn't more. influence them quite as brightly, I would say. Um, we used to try to guess how our fish repairs yeah. were going to dry, and we would anticipate by how much color to put in, and then you would you put green in, and you put brown in, and you'd fix your repaired area, and you think, oh man, I hit it perfectly, and no, not going to have to paint that, and uh, only when it dries, the epoxies dry a little different than when they're fresh. Yeah. Um, and this is the clay, we'll just show them real fast, but that, um, how that takes color. Um, anything we need to answer? Does anybody have any questions? Um, not right now. David McLean says Merry Christmas, which David, yeah. I believe I just got your hat packed and out today for you, so be looking for that in the mail. Um, Dennis Grundy says Merry Christmas. Hey, Dennis. Jeff Morris likes your sweatshirt. <laughs> Sweaters. Um, so here is, this is the mixed color of the clay. If you guys haven't had a chance to work with it, really cool um, sculpting epoxy. Then we do all our nostril inside nasal work, you know, with colored epoxy like this. Yeah, it just makes your finish work. The less paint you have to put on, the better. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're starting pre-colored, it helps a lot. We can, we've done flocking, we've done oil paint. Um, should we try some gray text in it? See that would give us a great color. And now, when you were painting on your jaw set, backing up a little bit um, with Createx, what what reducer were you using? I was using the 4011 um, or the 4012. I think I reached for both. This looks like I had the 4012. Um, it seems that our here in the shop, we've had pretty good luck with both the 4011 and the 4012. Um, they seem to be interchangeable. One, I believe the literature is going to tell you to use as a high temperature, higher temperature. Um, like summertime. Yes, like a summertime. Um, the 4012 saying 60 to 80. I think the 4011, I think the paperwork on it says something about um, maybe it's the lower. Um, I haven't seen the big difference at you. No, I don't think so. Not between the 11 and the 12. Um, but there's, there would oh, be that color that nice. Yeah. So there's some pre-colored um, clay with a water base. And it doesn't seem to be coming off on my fingers. Um, it's not coming off on the paper, so it won't come off on your product. And with the clay, out. you found that it feathers real nice 
with alcohol, right? Man, it it, it really does. Um, that's one of the one of the many advantages. Many of the any of the epoxies work well with solvent, safety solvent too. Um, but um, alcohol with the uh, with the clay, with Rick's clay product, really feathers it out nice. And the advantage of this is we've got a set up time of probably 10 minutes and a sandable time of maybe an hour. Yeah, sand's a little real. Yeah, sand's really, sand. really nice. Really sand's nice. Um, that's kind of a fun new product to with a little bit more. But um, any of these things are, and, and something we didn't touch too much on, they're all pretty compatible. So they really you are. saw something over there that you liked, that you wanted to add to here, for instance, how you used your pan pastels, that might work really good in these little low spots. Sure, sure. Um, don't be afraid to mix. Um, I mean, every once in a while you're going to get an adverse reaction, but we find it kind of rare. Um, if yeah. we do get a reaction, it's sometimes between our glosses and our and our paints, but not so much putting lacquer over water paint, acrylic paint, or um, the oils. I'd be a little careful of painting strong oils and then painting water over it. Yeah. Um, I remember a door one time that all the paint peeled off that I did something like that. But uh, typically, when any of the stuff that we're dealing with here, um, the lacquers and the waters, we spray one over the other very often. Uh, we're always spraying. I mean, I can come back on this. I can take my airbrush and I can intensify my yellow with the airbrush, even over the pan pastels. Yeah. I can put the pan pastels over that. Uh, I would not be afraid to take the Createx and come in and do any detail work with the Createx. Uh, the manufacturers are going to tell you absolutely no. You're going to, it's the worst thing you can ever do. Do not mix. Um, I think they just want to sell solely their product, but we, we do a lot of mixing and have a lot of good success with, with mixing. Um, I think the only advice would be to make sure their layers are dry in between. And always test something. If you're worried about it, um, we use plexiglass or little pieces of glass, something we can clean off. Oh, yeah. And don't be afraid to paint something on a little piece of plexiglass, which is a nice slick surface, and then come in and, and re do what you're going to do on your fish and see how it actually uh, reacts because on something clear um, you can you know you'll see it right away if there's any kind of bad right. reaction it's not something that five years from now your paint's going to fall off I'd, I'd be real surprised yeah. not impossible but surprised hopefully not gonna so just kind of be yeah. be creative whether you're working on a, a bird foot or a fish fin or a jaw set um, or whether you're working with water-based paints or lacquers um, experiment a little bit um, don't be afraid. I remember another thing we used to do that I got good results. I used to take Magic Smooth Harder and mix it with um, oh, yeah. Magic Sculpt resin. Sure. And I'd do the opposite. And I used to add uh, oil paints to that. And you can get all kinds of different mediums that translucent. Different bodies, yeah. Because the Magic Smooth, that's, that's kind of a fun little tip. I used to have, I used to do seminars um, in the early days and I had a cardboard sheet. This is this one, 50-50, this is this one, this is wow. this one, different colors. And it's kind I of see that. That fun. sounds fun. I think it died in really a long time ago. Make a new one. Um, what do you got? Did you guys pick something to give away? Mm -hmm. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. What did you pick? And what did you pick? <laughs> um, I believe it was a pan pastel <laughs> scale, small uh, kit. Five color kit. Okay, their new, choice. The new five color kits. Yeah. Their choice of colors, so a new pan pastel. And the winner for sharing, so make sure you like and share this video for next week's chance to win. But last week's winner, first winner was... So we have Emily Stapleton. So if you are present, please go ahead and comment in. Um, and while we wait for that, we are doing hydrogen peroxide 30% off right now. So if you want to order that, we just got a big shipment in and it's in our way. So <laughs> this is Euro Skull. 30% it off. Is. It is Euro Skull. This is a great is. Um, 40 volume. So it's a great product. Make sure you take advantage of the sale. So that is your Saturday, I believe. And then people are saying they haven't got the catalog, but a lot of people are coming just showed up. So just keep waiting. It'll be there throughout the next week. If you are a customer, you have gotten it. If it's showing up shredded, we apologize, the mailers are not being gentle with them because they're just growing. <laughs> so um, let us know and we'll get a new one out in your next order. But don't forget a selfie for those that said it just showed up. Make sure that you um, 
make sure that you take a selfie and put it up there. I think we have one spot left for our selfie winner, which is $25 um, dollars of a gift certificate. Along with, we take all of them at the end of this little competition and we will pick our, our employees, will pick a winner. So make sure you do that. We are doing a little customer appreciation gift. Um, we are doing, we have put together a gift basket. This is a good gift basket. It is, but of course I'm gonna ask for something in return. But what we're doing is we got a hat, we have a taxidermy t-shirt, we have the all around white tail reference book, and we have the freezer alarm, the digital freezer alarm with and the I weather look at station. My freezer, which is 50 yards from here, and it is at 11 degrees, 54% humidity at 502 on Thursday, December 19th. And those four products all together is $180 around. So what we're doing is we are doing, go to our Facebook page and give us a recommendation. And we are going to pick one lucky winner that Christmas we will announce a winner and this is your basket. So we'll get that out to you. But all you have to do is go to our Facebook page and give us a recommendation because satisfied customers are our favorite favorite thing and it's very important to us so let us know now, this is what you like about us. This is the thing you have in the supply company. This is, the weather station? This is a good deal. Pretty that was cool. a good find, huh? Cool. Has Emery chimed in? No. What's the so next one? The next one is Kimberly Jackson. So if you are present, Kimberly, go ahead and let us know. Hey, is there a Sherpa in here? Is that not coming? No, but we do have Sherpas oh, in. Oh, show. Um, we have three colors and they just arrived. They are in stock and ready. Um, and these babies are warm. So yes, let's you do the I know. My favorite is this cream, natural color. Oof. Staticky. But so Brett has the gray, Tom's holding the black, and here is the cream, natural. Um, they're great. They're Very really, warm. really warm. Everybody just raves how warm Soft, they are. super yeah. soft. But we have them available and in in-house in these three colors. So take advantage of that. They're $40. Um, very, very nice. Great gift idea. Those that pre-ordered, they're going out today for you. Um, and then we also have our hats in, also available. Has your second one chimed in yet? Yes, she okay. has. So these are our hats. Um, these ones are kind of cool. The green, that green one there, they have like a... Almost like a territory land mapping. Contours. Sure. Yeah. That was yeah. called? So yeah, that one, and the green one has it too. And then this one, this one has I like that color. a little bit of the flag on it. I look really good. You do look good in hats. But those are all available $18 online or call it in, and they are ready to ship. Oh, dear. What are you guys doing next week? Oh my gosh, isn't it? Christmas. Next week, we not probably be here, will we? Yeah, you have everybody working. Oh, we will be here? Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's the 26th. Christmas is over. All right. It'll be special. Special. So we'll come special. back special and no more Christmas decorations, but maybe tomorrow will be some fun with the Christmas decoration. We also, Northwest Iowa School Tax Army, we do have a nine week course coming up in January, and I was told we have one spot available for that. One spot left. So if anybody's interested, you can give us a call at 1 800 488 3256 and talk we had, to Vicki. We had three people that were enrolled for this winter's class transfer to next winter. Three. And two of them filled right away. Yeah. So. We do have a question from Levi Jenkins. He filled out an estimate request form on our website yesterday and was wondering how long it would take to get an estimate. We'll get right oh, to you. Yeah. We must have missed it with our busyness. So we'll check it out and get to you, Levi. And we got to apologize because it has been so, it so is. crazy, crazy busy. Crazy busy. Yeah. So everybody have a very, very Merry Christmas and we'll see you. Next Thursday. Next Thursday. Next Thursday. <laughs> Thanks Merry, for tuning Merry, in. Thank you, everybody. Merry Christmas.